This week on World Traveler Cooking, we're going to make a real Italian classic, crispy, crunchy porchetta. Now, um, I am using one non-traditional ingredient today, which is, I don't have any cognac, so I'm going to use some uh, cavados. This is an optional ingredient, you can leave it out if you'd like, um, but um, this is one of the really wonderful Italian dishes, and it is an absolute delight. So, our ingredients, we have a large 1.3 kilogram um, pork belly roast. There are a few bones in here I'm going to pull out with a knife uh, before we get started. We're going to season this with salt, pepper, um, I have some thyme that's now dried, so I'll just use some of that, and some rosemary that's also now dried. So, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is an interesting engineering piece. Um, we'll talk about some of the challenges and how to avoid some of the problems. So, at first I thought these were bones, but as I look at it more closely, these are actually pieces of cartilage, so I'm going to let them in. Um, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score this in different directions to increase the surface area and make it easier to roll. So, if you have pieces of um, cartilage like this, you definitely want to cut through them, perhaps, on the scoring process, or remove them if you don't like the cartilage. So, to score it, I'm going to cut at an angle. See, there we get a little bit of the cartilage. There we go through another piece of cartilage, and so forth. Once I'm done with this direction, then we'll go the other direction. Now, I might actually kind of cut through, which is not what I want to do, but that'll be okay. See? Now we just rotate 90 degrees. We do the same. Now this is done to increase the surface area as we cook it. It's also done to make sure that um, when we roll it, that there's a little bit of uh, play at work. So here we go. So now that we're done with this, the first step is we're going to salt this pretty well. So I'm just going to take this up, grab some salt, sprinkle it liberally all over the pork. Common mistake is not to salt enough. Remember this is a big chunk of meat so it requires a fair bit of salt. And then we're going to add pepper and we're going to add our spices. So with pepper just sprinkle it kind of generously all over. And then we do the same thing with the rosemary and the thyme. Be right back when that's done. So here I've added rosemary and thyme. You can add more or less as much as you like of each, but generally I say I think it's better with more rosemary than thyme. And I'm just gonna dribble, again this is optional, a bit of brandy of some sort, in this case is calvados, which um, will work. And then I'm just going to pat it all in, okay? So next step we're going to roll, and then we're going to prick the outside. So in this case, you have a few options. We can roll it. The problem is if we just roll it like this, um, we're not going to get these points to quite touch. That's probably okay in this case. If we really cared about that, we could, we could have cut a little bit of this off before we seasoned it. Um, but that's, uh, th that's okay. Um, and, you know, the, the reason I think that this is okay will become clear as we get into cooking it. Um, I actually don't mind it if the skin doesn't quite wrap all, quite all the way around. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set this on our piece of string. And you definitely need like a few good pieces of, of, of kitchen yarn here. Some people try to use meshes. I don't think it works as well. And we're going to roll this. 
okay? And then when we get to the end, we're going to pull these tight and we're going to tie them, okay? So, um, usually what I do is I tighten it about like this, then I try re-rolling it again, and then I'll usually tie this in a slip knot, because then I can come back and I can um, do it again later. So like just a, a standard like tie that you do with your shoes, and I'll come back and I'll redo all of these once I get them sort of in place so that it's a little easier to work with, because as you can see, it's a little hard to manage. I'll be back when I have all three in place, and then I will redo each of these, and we'll be, we'll be pretty close to uh, pricking the outside. So as I redo these, I'm typically going to remove them once and tie them tighter, right? Um, and since I now have all three in place, it means I have a little bit more support as I do that. So, and normally you'd want this to be as close to, to as tight as possible, but uh, these two as close to touching as possible, but as I say, the, um, the this pork belly is a thick enough cut that that's not going to happen. So, here we go, and now we have this here. So the next step is I'm going to poke this all over with a paring knife. So the basic problem is if you just try to cut it like, cook it like this, without poking it like I'm doing now, the fat's all going to stay underneath the skin, it's not going to come up, and you're not going to get the nice crispy pick of the skin that you really want. So. Poke this all over. If you have saute skewers, those work. Um, same basic idea as like the Chinese crispy pork bellies. I mean, this is an Italian crispy pork belly, right? And I'm just going to do the same thing all over. And then we're going to get to the interesting bit of the engineering, which is setting this up to roast. Now, at this point, it's uh, good to have your oven preheated to probably 160, that's about 350, 375 Fahrenheit, 160 Celsius, and um, yeah, so that this can go in not too long. But yeah, we're almost done poking this all the way over. And the next part's what I call the wet part of the bake. So before I go into how to do this next part, let me explain the problem. We're going to be cooking this under aluminum foil, but if the aluminum foil touches the skin here, as it heats up and softens, the aluminum foil will stick to the skin. These forks will also, but I'm gonna use the forks to minimize the points of contact so that the forks basically act as a spacer and hold the um, and hold the, um, the aluminum foil off. So, I'll do the same thing over here. Okay. So then we're going to tent this with aluminum foil, making sure that we're careful so that the aluminum foil isn't resting on the skin, and then we'll put this in the oven at 160 or 375 for about two hours. Now this part of the bake is really important because uh, what's going to happen here is that the meat is going to be baking under uh, relatively moist conditions. So the skin is gonna soften up, it's gonna get sticky and gluey, going to stick to anything it touches, um, but it's also going to soften up a lot, and so what will happen when we take this off and do the final bake is it'll crisp up. So you can do this for more than two or three hours if you like, uh, the longer you do it, the more fat will render out. The fat can be used, but keep in mind it will have um, a little bit of flavoring from 
uh, the seasoning. So once this is done, I will put it in the oven and we'll be back in about two hours. So after about two hours, you can see that this is getting really gluey and we're going to take this off. Now, um, you just got to carefully twist it and then just slide it out. Do the same thing with the other. You'll see that this is really sticky. If we had just let the aluminum foil touch, um, it would just be stuck and when we pull it off, as you can see here, we even got a little bit of the um, skin with it, same thing would happen. Now this is going to go back in. We've we have to turn the heat way up. We'll turn the broiler on, and we'll uh, we'll turn this in. Or we'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 put this in just at a higher heat for a while. Then we'll probably turn the boiler on, broiler on to um, crisp up the skin. And so here, our porchetta is now out of the oven. Now, if you like your porchetta to pop uh, to puff up a little more, this one puffed up a bit, but. Um, just slightly disappointed in it. Um, then usually the problem is that you, your oven didn't get hot enough fast enough. So in this particular case, next time I expect to turn up the heat maybe five minutes before I take the foil off, um, just to make sure that when I put it back it's in as hot as it can, and then I'll probably immediately turn on the broiler so that the skin puffs up a little more and you can get that wonderful crunch that we all love so much. So. I'm going to let this sit now for 10 minutes or so, and then when I come back, I'm going to cut a bit off just for the taste test. Um, obviously, this is a whole lot of meat, so um, you can save it. Um, over time, you know, the outside will soften a bit, and so just be aware of that. Now normally I would slice off much bigger pieces, but I'm just doing a taste test here. So I've made sure to get a little bit of the crispy skin and some of the insides. And then I'm just going to put it on a plate. So, just like this. And I'm going to do the taste test just with this bit. Um, and from here, um, yeah, we're ready for the taste test. And now for the taste test. First, I'm going to try a little bit of this crispy skin. This part crisped up, up very nicely. <clears throat> That's delicious right there. <clears throat> it's a little bit bitter from the fact that it burned on the little bit of the lip, but you know, it's going to burn on the lip a little bit. Um, <clears throat> Mm. This meat is really flavorful. Um, very nicely spiced. Um, just <clears throat> great um, food. Great flavor. You can taste the thyme, the rosemary, particularly the rosemary. It's just like the flavors just blend together. I, <clears throat> I attribute. <clears throat> Sorry, this is one of the dishes where the crispy part can get dry caught in your throat a little bit, but that's okay. So make sure to serve it with water, which I'm not doing here. Um, this what I was going to say is that the um, flavors of the spices meld together very nicely. I attribute that to the um, brandy, um, but. Um, as I say, the brandy is optional. So if you find this content interesting, I hope I've earned a like and a subscription from you. Please check out my Patreon page where, uh, if you want to support my work, you can um, get access to, early access to some of my videos there. Um, on top of that, uh, if you make this dish, you make it a little differently than I do, because, of course, there are many different ways of making it. I'd love to hear how you do it differently in the comments. I think it's always great when we share tips about how we do food differently. At any rate, recipes in the description. Bon appetit, and see you next week.